Hello, this is Jared Nimi with a video on whether your posterior is proper in Bayesian parameter estimation. As a reminder, uh, if we have an unnormalized density f of theta, we call it proper if the integral of that density over the support of theta is, infin is finite, and otherwise we call it improper. As another reminder that we can always create a normalized density, that is one that integrates to 1, from a proper unnormalized density if we just divide the unnormalized density by its normalizing constant. And to see this, we just note that the part in the denominator is a not a function of theta. So we're just going to call it c. And then we can show that the integral of the normalized density, where we plug in the definition of the normalized density and realize that the part of the denominator does not depend on theta. And just remove it from the integral. That integral is itself c, and so we have the ratio c over c, which is 1. All right, so again, to create a normalized density from a proper unnormalized density, just take the unnormalized density and divide by its so-called normalizing constant. All right, so I wanted to give a quick example of uh, proper and improper in the case of binomial model. So supposedly, suppose we have binomial data with success probability theta. And we're going to assume the prior that has this form, the so-called beta 0, 0 prior. And the first thing we're going to do here is show that it's in fact improper. All right, so if we see that this is, we see that this is improper by finding its integral. Note here that this quantity here, 1 minus theta, is less than 1, but the inverse of that is therefore greater than 1. So this integral is greater than that integral, which is an integral that we can in fact do. So the integral here is the log of theta evaluated at theta equals 1 and at 0. And the log of 0 is negative infinity. And so we have our conclusion here where this integral is infinite. This integral here, which is greater than it, must also be infinite. And therefore, this, prop, this prior is, in fact, improper. Now the question becomes, we know that the prior is improper. But what about the posterior? We can derive the functional form of the posterior given here. And now the question is, is it proper? So we take the integral over the support for theta. And now we use our same trick, but this time, this 1 minus theta is still less than 1, but it's now being raised to a positive power, so long as y is not equal to n. And then it's being raised to a positive power. We have this relationship, where removing this term decreases the integral. Right? Again, so long as y is not equal to n. And now we can do this integral. If y is 0, we have the term we had before. We have a log of 0, which is not infinite. So we can do this integral in the case where y is not 0. In which case, we get this functional form. We plug in the values for theta. And we get 1 over y, as long as y is not 0. So it turns out that this posterior is, in fact, proper so long as y is not 0 and y is not n. So here's an example where we used an improper prior, and the posterior is proper so long as y is not y is not zero and y is not n. That is, there weren't all successes or all failures. So the example demonstrates the fact that the posterior being proper may depend on the data you actually observe. All right. So one way to avoid having to do these calculations is to use a proper prior. So I want to take a couple of slides now and talk about um, the posterior being proper when the prior itself was proper. So the first theorem has to do with discrete data. So that is, if you have a proper prior and discrete data, then the posterior is always proper. All right? We can prove this by using the notation, notation we've been using, where p theta is the prior and py given theta is the statistical model. And our goal then is to show that the marginal likelihood which is the integral here over the unnormalized posterior, is in fact finite. And so for discrete data, we can say that the marginal likelihood for the data we actually observed is less than or equal to sum over all data that we could have observed of their marginal likelihoods. And just this integral right here. And by Fubini's theorem, we can reverse the order of operations here and take the integral outside of the sum. Now the part on the inside here for a given theta, the summation over all possible data sets for this probability mass function must be 1. Now we just have the integral over our prior, but we've assumed that the prior is in fact proper, so this integral is just 1. And we suffice to show that the posterior is always proper 
if y is discrete and the prior is proper. So then what about continuous data? Continuous data, we have almost the same conclusion, except for this time, the posterior is almost always prior, proper. We have the same um, quantity that we're trying to show that's finite. Um, so we're going to start here with the integral over py dy. And we're going to just substitute the definition, just like we did before. We're going to reverse the order of operations using, again, the Venus theorem. And we're going to note that this quantity on the inside here is just the probability density function for data y given a particular value for theta, which must be 1. So that's 1. Here's the integral over our prior. Our prior was proper, so this integral has to be 1. Um, but now we haven't sufficed to show that for the data we actually observed has anything to do with this integral over uh, all the data we could have possibly observe, except that if this is ever infinite, if it's ever th infinite, then the only way that this could be true, that this part is finite, is if the location... Another way to say that is that PY is almost always proper. And this would suffice to show the proof that if the prior is both proper and the data is continuous, then the posterior is almost always proper. All right, so as a recap, to perform Bayesian inference, Bayesian parameter estimation, you must ensure that your posterior is proper, that is, that it has a finite integral. If you decide to use a prior that's improper, then you absolutely must check that the posterior is proper. And we've seen this will actually depend on the data set that you actually observed. And we have an example here where it's not proper for a particular data set, in this case, the binomial with all successes or all failures. If the prior is proper and you're using discrete data, then you're in the clear, the posterior is proper. If you have continuous data, then the posterior is almost always proper. That is, it could depend on the data set you've actually observed. But at least to my knowledge, we do not have a counterexample that actually shows that the posterior is improper for a particular proper prior and a particular data set Y. Right, so what this means is that it may be that there's a proof out there that hasn't been shown yet that shows that it will always be proper. Um, but at this point, this is a much stronger statement than this statement right here, where we've seen a particular counterexample where it's not proper. So for the most part, when in doubt, the suggestion here is to use a proper prior, and you can be sure that the posterior is almost always Thanks.